So if you've seen the previous couple of videos, you'll know that the EWP install has been over cooling and uh, just following some information on the rx7.com forums I've decided to put this um, system together with a, an external thermostat. So this is what it looks like. I'll just run through a little bit more detail as to what you're seeing here. Um, this is the um, outlet of the engine. Um, comes down to a T. This comes through to the radiator. So you'd flow through the radiator, come back out the radiator here into the thermostat housing. So if the thermostat was open, the flow would be along here, through the inlet to the pump, and then out. You see that um, there, the outlet of the pump, go back up into the engine. Um, if the engine is cold, the thermostat would be closed. There's no flow at that point through the radiator, so the flow would come out of the engine. Instead of going through the radiator, it come in this direction. This is the bypass route of the thermostat and then back out through the pump and into the engine. So that's the basic um, flow, the basic circuit for this external thermostat. Just a couple of points on the thermostat. This, this is a genuine um, Land Rover part. Um, there's a few different part availabilities for this um, and I would definitely recommend this one although I've not tested it yet but I did test a black one same part number but a stiffer spring on the bypass and a, a creamy white colored one which was supposed to be an OEM identical replacement to this one um, but the the creamy white one definitely has a stiffer spring so this I think this is the one I would recommend and obviously I'll give some feedback as to its operation but um, it is a bit more expensive. Also um, on the input side of the pump here um, this is an additional item from um, Davis Craig um, for uh, heater returns. Uh, it has one um, connection with it comes with a straight um, hose connector so obviously I've, I've put this uh, 90 degree on here so the heater return will come in here and then I have as you can see drilled tapped and put another hose barb on here for the um, the turbo return the coolant return for the turbos so that's it um, all um, all together it is quite bulky <laughs> um, and there's not a lot of room one thing to note on the thermostat housing um, is everything on the RX-7, the coolant circuit is 38 millimeter or inch and a half diameter. However, the um, inlet to the thermostat is 35 millimeter, outlet of the thermostat is 35 millimeter, the bypass is 32. So just to run through the hoses here, this is a 90 degree 38 to 35 reducing silicon coupler. This is a straight um, 38 to 32. This is a straight 38 to 35. Obviously, this is just a uh, straight 38. This is a 45 um, 38 diameter. And then this is a um, 180 degree 38. And then the, uh, the input to the block is a um, 38 millimeter both ends but uh, 30 degree and some of those will need just trimming um, on their lengths a little. Um, I have as you probably can see in here um, this one has an internal spring support spring to stop it collapsing and the uh, the 180 here has an internal support spring um, suction from the pump just to make sure that doesn't collapse. So um, here it is uh, installed. Uh, looking from the front, um, let's see if I can get under here and get, give you a better look at this. But that's the uh, pump 
um, there's the 180. Um, I don't know how you, if you can see that. There's the takeoff from the radiator thermostat, 180 into the pump. Uh, that's probably all you're pretty much going to see from here. But installed, um, pretty much just just maybe blocks a little bit of the flow from that one radiator fan. This one is completely clear still, um, so I don't think that'll have any impact, if anything. And that's it. So now we can uh, get back to filling her back up and giving her a test.